Good morning. Welcome to Daily Devotion. I'm Pastor Krieger. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. Keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. So these past couple of months, uh, we have been looking at um, First Thessalonians in Bible class. Uh, it's a pretty short book. Uh, it's only five chapters, and, and uh, in, in class, we're actually closing in on the end. So this Sunday, we're starting the last chapter. I want to look at just those first few verses of chapter 5 this morning. Uh, so the background is that, that Paul had spent a very short time in Thessalonica, um, less than a month, and... Uh, he was establishing a congregation there and teaching among them about Jesus. But he was run out of town and he had to flee for his life, even though doing so meant that he had to leave behind these very new Christians who were also the target of the same persecution. And Paul expected they, that they would abandon the faith uh, out of concern for their own safety. But months later, he receives the report that they were persisting. They were clinging to Jesus and they hadn't given up. And so Paul wrote this letter to encourage them. Um, so it seems like he had heard some specific issues that they were dealing with, and a lot of it had to do with Jesus' return. And some may, may have gotten the impression that the phrase, Jesus is coming soon, meant that he was definitely showing up in the next couple of days or, or weeks or months or something. And some of them seems, seems like they had stopped working. Um, other people were confused about uh, who Jesus was coming back to rescue, and with the, the persecution as intense as it was, it's possible that some members of their church had even been killed, and the fear was that Jesus hadn't come in time to save them. Uh, it's likely by this point in the letter, though, or by, by this point in the letter, Paul had, had addressed all those concerns, and then he repeated what he had probably taught them already when he was in, in person with them. And, uh, and this is regarding when Jesus is actually going to come back. So this is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the first few verses. Now, brothers, about times and dates we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. Uh, this is the word of the Lord. Uh, so uh, Paul uses a whole bunch of pictures here. First, he says the, days, the day of the Lord will be like a thief in the night. Now, how do thieves come? Well, first, they don't announce themselves. They come when you're not expecting them. That's the whole point, right? And then Paul doubles down on that, that idea by comparing the day to labor, labor pains. Um, and labor pains come suddenly, but he's saying more than that. He's also saying that they're inevitable. You can't avoid it. You don't get to month nine of a pregnancy and then somehow expect to avoid the labor pains. It's part of the deal. And one more thing. Um, maybe you've seen uh, this advertisement that went viral a few years ago. This is an actual advertisement for a pregnancy test. And people have pointed out that uh, these new parents probably should have figured out by now that they were expecting. And that's, that wasn't an accident. The, the ad was actually meant to be a bit tongue-in-cheek. What they're saying is our pregnancy test is even more reliable than any other sign that you might depend on. But that actually uh, ties in pretty well here because, you know, what's the whole point of comparing the day of the Lord to labor pains? Well, like we said, it's sudden, it's inevitable, and one more thing, you can see it coming. There are definite signs telling us that Jesus is on his way. And that's why Paul says this day shouldn't come as a surprise. Children of the light are not in darkness. So they're, they're not going to be surprised by a thief. So we look at the world and we look at the signs that Jesus tells us to watch for um, and we see that he is coming. He says soon, but we don't know how soon. We don't know the actual day. But the point of all this is that we should live expectantly. Because one day the king of earth and heaven will return. It will be sudden. It will be a physical return. And it will be awesome. He will bring justice to his enemy. And he'll bring mercy and deliverance to his former enemies. So 
you look ahead to that day and you look ahead to this day and think of how keeping all this in mind might might change you and might change how you deal with things today. Maybe today is the day. Maybe this is the day that Jesus comes back. Maybe And this challenge at work that's going to try to ruin your week, how upset can it possibly make you when you consider that Jesus is coming back? And how about this? The person that you miss the most that has already gone ahead of you to heaven, how is your grief different knowing that Jesus is on his way to reunite you with them? And the absolute vile wickedness in this world that, that hurts people, that defies God, that hates Jesus. Well, no worries. Jesus is going to deal with that when he comes back. You're children of the day. We're not in the dark. We don't have to act like we don't know that he's coming. And just a few verses later, Paul sums up how knowing this changes everything. Now, this is verses 9 through 11. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we're awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. So just keep on doing that. Keep being who you are. You're children of the light. More on this in Bible class this weekend. That's Sunday at 9.15 in the multipurpose room. Jesus is coming soon. In his name, amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.